Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. As you can see, we're on a new set. We are, and I love it. How about you? <laughs> well, you did enough decorating <laughs> on it. Actually, uh, in the studio, this is only one of uh, four different locations that we can yes. that we can tape the program from, or whatever else we need to do. And this is the this is the kitchen setup. That's right. And, uh, and our crew did a great job. Oh yeah. We just yeah. all worked together and made it right, happen right. quickly. <laughs> and you can do a cooking show from here. I can. I yes. can. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you know, for a celebration, I even made the crew my chocolate pie. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Yes, they're clapping. Uh, they've been a long time waiting for that chocolate yeah, that's right, pie. That's right, that's right. And, and I finally made it for So them. with the celebration of, the, of getting these all set up in the new studio, we had a had some barbecue brought in, uh -huh. and then we had to buy, and So, hey, it's just a great time, and, and it's going to be a great program today. That's right, and you know what? Talking about celebration, this weekend... This is the 4th of July weekend celebration. Yeah, weekend celebration, yes. yeah, because the 4th is on Monday. Yes. And uh, so uh, this is the weekend that everybody celebrates for, uh, you know, for the 4th of July. And, our Independence Day. And, and our Independence Day. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think that maybe in school nowadays they are not teaching them as much about our American heritage as... I would like. Okay, That's right. put it. I just and we it. are celebrating with our red, white, and blue. Yeah. I've got stars here. Right, right, <laughs> right. But uh, you know, as we get into the program today, uh, I'm going to talk about. I will wait on my change to come. Now, some people are not b willing to wait uh, until God answers. That's right. They want it. We live in instant society. Microwave society. Yeah, instant society. In fact, my grandson was through the studio here. And he you got know, some of that chocolate pie. He got some of the chocolate pie. Our oldest grandson, Craig's <laughs> oldest, Cameron. And he said, well, this kitchen is not complete. It doesn't have a microwave. <laughs> He's 22. And he said, it don't, it's not a complete kitchen without a microwave. Microwave, I know. <laughs> so, but uh, waiting sometimes is important. And now Job said in Job 14, 14, all the days of my appointed time I will wait Till my change comes. Yes. You know, we that's, that's from the King James Version. We need to realize that even when there is despair and we find ourselves trapped in situations, we sometimes they think it's all over and it'll never change. That's right. But if you believe God and yes. keep your hope in God mm -hmm. and remember what Paul said, that these temporary afflictions, I'm yes. paraphrasing, uh, they're, they're going to, they're going to pass That's or right. momentary as he's one of the translations, but I call it temporary. Affliction. They're going to pass. So our key to victory is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So why don't we go right now where I'm talking about I'll wait on my change to come. You know, uh, the, the title of my message tonight, I guess I'll preach it. I don't know. I will wait for my change to come. You know, a lot of people are not willing to wait, to wait on their change to come. They get in a hurry and get ahead of God. Come on now, listen to me. You know, uh, uh, a politician in his campaign, he promised if he got elected, uh, he, he promised change. He got elected. And after he took office, he took the people's dollars and left them with the change. So he did what he said. <laughs> I want us to look. Now I'm, I don't know that I've ever spoken from Job before in my life, but uh, I want us to look at the last part of Job 14, 14. Job 14, 14. Job 14, 14. And I've been, I, I, I get chastised by my wife because, <laughs> no, not really, but she does say, hon, slow down a little bit. 
Uh, so people, you go so fast, by the time they've turned to one scripture, you're already to another one. And so uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking her good advice. Some of you other men ought to learn that too. And all the ladies should have said amen. <laughs> Come on, help me out here. <laughs> all right, John, uh, Job 14, 14. And we are going to look at the last clause of that scripture. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. That's the King James Version. The new King James says, all the days of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. And then the Amplified says, all the days of my warfare and service, I will wait till my change and release shall come. Now, if you've ever been in the military and stood guard, you have something called the changing of the guard. And that comes about you you cannot leave your post until you're relieved. It's called the changing of the guard. Uh, actually, I got that out of the Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown commentary. It's actually said change. My release as a soldier at his post, released from the duty by relieving the guard. Now, as we, as we read from this, Job is in a dire situation. I don't know whether you know the story or not. He lost all of his children. He had lost most of his possessions. He was severely af physically afflicted. And his wife had encouraged him to curse God and die. His buddies had come up there and said, hey, you're living in sin, Job. That's why all this and God's punishing you. And all of a sudden, Job begins to wonder if God is mad at him. He begins to wonder if it would be better for him to die. Maybe Job's like the person that I talked to one time and he had been sick and, I, and when I asked him about it, he replied, I was so sick, I was afraid I wasn't going to die. <laughs> I, I heard one guy say one time, that he was so sick, he, had, he would have to get better to die. <laughs> anyway, that's where Job was, okay? Now, Job's story is not like a lot of other people. Today, we have a large group of people that are caught in the, seemingly the grip of quiet despair. They resign themselves to believe that their life will never be any better. It'll never change. They've given up on seeing any change in their condition. They sink into depression and have no hope of a better tomorrow. Have you ever run across some people like that? How many of you run across some people like that? They go through their daily routine with no expectation of any change. Their, their eyes no longer gaze toward the high horizons of possibility. They just keep walking the treadmill of unchanging circumstances. And see, people have accepted Satan's lie that nothing will ever change for them and Death will be a sweet relief. But tonight, we all know Satan's a liar. And from this scripture here in Job, I want to try to get, a, get three thoughts across. Number one, Job realized what he was going through and then he began to realize that it was temporary and that change would come. Now, you ever notice God actually has ordained a normal, normal process of change. You know, 
things on the earth are designed to change. Go to Genesis 8, 22. Genesis 8, 22. Genesis 8, 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. It's hot outside right now. <laughs> but if you'll just wait, it'll change. It's, God has ordained that. It says it right here in the beginning, in the book of the beginnings, it says that God has ordained change, seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night. And it says they shall not cease. In the course of time, change will happen. The Apostle Paul said, our outward bodies were growing older every day, but the inward man can be renewed every day. You know, whether you like it or not, change is going to come. You know, no, no matter how how much you don't want it to, change will come. And you can look around this room and see that people used to have hair don't have any hair anymore. <laughs> people that their hair used to be black, it's, it's not black anymore. Unless you have a good wife like mine that's a, that's a hairdresser and she don't like it that color, so she put, makes it the color she wants it. <laughs> I'm, I mean, somebody said, oh, you shouldn't say it. Why not? I'm not vain about it. Anybody has any sense knows. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just have to be around after about four weeks and you can tell real quickly. <laughs> Change happens. We start out with one set of teeth and end up with a, another set of teeth. And in the old days, you would end up with a, you could end up with a third set of teeth. That doesn't happen anymore. But how many are old enough to remember? Maybe your grandpa or your grandma had had a third set of teeth because they they had their baby teeth and their adult teeth, and they were all gone. And now they had the, the false teeth. You know, uh, Lynette's cousins, their <laughs> their daddy had false teeth. <laughs> And so he would take them out every night and put them in this solution on the on the the, the table in table there beside the bed. And so I don't know whether you, when I you know used to they used to you could have them machines that you put the uh, you know used to be a nickel and a dime now it's fifty cents my or my grandkids always and, and you could turn you could get a little little set of false teeth. Anybody ever seen that? So one night after he went to bed, they went in there and slipped, took his teeth out and put that in there. He woke up the next morning and he said, oh, my Lord, Mama, my teeth have shrunk overnight. <laughs> there was a change, all right. <laughs> you know, some things get older, some things wear out. On the other side, some things, on the positive side, some things get better. Some people become successful. You be, they change from being a failure to being a success. You know, man is always challenged to think that things will change. You know, when a person is sick, they're looking for a change. When you don't have any money, you're looking for a change. When some relationship has been messed up, you're looking for a change. You know, we are made to have hope that things will change and we will have a better life. God made that into us. How many of you, if you just stop and think back and think about it, how many of you are always thinking and realizing that there is hope for change, something better? Hello? Hey, and God tells us that if we'll believe him. 
See, we need to realize that uh, hope in the future will bring about change. What lies in front of us is a whole lot better than what lies behind us. See, you now we need to realize, and when we realize that things will change, we can realize not whatever it is you're going through it makes no difference what it is, it's temporary. It's temporary. Things have a way to be subject to change. It's not always going to be like this. The Apostle Paul said it in 2 Corinthians 4.17, part of the scripture says, he, he called them, when he was going through troubles and things, he called them a light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now, it may seem like 100 years to you, but to God, it's just a moment. You know, we need to always be telling someone my change is on the way. I will not stay like I am. And no matter how good it is right now, there's something better, so look for the change. God does not want us to get to a point and stop. He wants us to continually look for the change to move with him into a better position, into a better life, and enjoying the things of God while we enjoy the things down here. See, we are, we are a creature that is a part of the earth, but we are also a part of the kingdom of God. And God wants us to have success and change in both of those areas. He does, you know, some people just get inside the door with salvation. And they stop. No, there's a whole lot more. There's a lot of change out there if you walk into it. Anybody getting anything? Now, Job had to be patient and have hope. This enabled him, this is the second point, to persevere until the change came. See, we need to have patience and hope in order to persevere or endure or survive until the change comes. In this verse, we see the word wait. Now, that's a Hebrew word. Now, I am not a, I am not a Hebrew scholar and I'm not a Greek scholar, but I can read, okay? And this Hebrew word wait here has the implication of being patient and being hopeful. That's the implication of that word wait. So he was not just passively waiting or doing nothing he was actually being patient, not being frustrated, not blame, blaming God. He was being hopeful and looking forward to a better time. This gives us a pattern for facing this seemingly unchanging situations that we find ourselves in. Just remember, your situation is temporary. Yes. Put your faith and trust in God and wait on Him, and He will help you and bring the change in the life that you need. That's right. And you know, the change that He brings around will be far greater even than what you could ever imagine. Yes. yes. So yes. make sure that you are patient. I know how it is, uh, and you know how it is oh, to yeah. be impatient. But I want to tell you what God's timing. Oh, I don't know how it is. Yes, you know how it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> God's timing is always the perfect time. And, you know, even doing God's will in the wrong time is not God's will. No, that's So right. it's that's important right. to remember, okay, your circumstances, it may, it may be difficult right now, but things will change. Just have faith in God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hey, man, there's a lot of, of things happening. Yes. A lot of summertime. Uh, summertime. Uh, we got camp meeting coming up uh, uh, here Ju uh, July the 24th through the 29th. That's uh, right. Right here on Arama campus. The Sunday evening service is at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then Monday through Friday, it's 10 a.m. to 30 p.m. Mm -hmm. and 7.30 p.m. Of course, I'll be speaking Craig, our son, will be speaking. Uh, Charles Cowan, Mark Hankins, Daryl Huffman, Steve right. Howe, David Sharon, and Earl Gleason. That's right. Uh, uh, Got a good lineup. It's, it's a good lineup. And then at the same time, mm -hmm. we have the Summer Blitz. Our daughter, she, she, it's hosted by her. She's uh, Pastor Denise Burns, Student Ministries and Family Life uh, 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 pastor, yes. and we'll have guest speakers. They got teen talks, and then they have a special outing on Friday. Friday that's right. And the times are the same. Uh, all that information can be found at rama.org. So just just go there and and, and check it out. That's and, right. Hey, uh, be sure and uh, and get in. You know, go and get ready to come. The hotel information is there and everything. Yes. But I want to announce a special Saturday night, August the 6th. You need to mark this on your calendar. Special Saturday night, August 6th at 6 p.m. Yes. We have a special service with Todd White. That's right. Here at Raymond Bible Church, 1025 West Kenosha Street, right here in Broken Era. Hey, that is going to be a great, great time. You want to mark your calendar. You want to get the young people here. Hey, uh, you know my my grandkids are all excited about That's it. Right. All of our all of our young adults are excited. Yes. Th this is this is a great time. And if you want to get somebody turned on for God. Just get them in Todd's service. That's right. Well, honey, guess what? We have a special offer for this month. Your book, It's Your Move. Yeah. And your dad's CD, How to Train the Human Spirit. Right. Uh, both of these, this book is awesome. And this CD by your dad, How to Train the Human Spirit, is great, too. Right. I'll tell you, it'll help you to know how to uh, listen to your own spirit you and know, make I, right decisions. I love the cover on this. It's a, it's a, it's a, a chess set, uh -huh. and it's a, it was a really a nice one that uh, they allowed us to take a picture of and put yes. on the book. And yes. it's your move. I That's mean. right. Normally, this would retail for thirteen ninety five, but this is a special offer for $10. You can have both the CD and your yes. book. Yes, so, hey, go right now and order this book. That's right. But, and you know what? We have special... Why do you got special? Uh, Christmas in, in July, July Cyber Cell. Online only. That's right. And it's only one day. One 24-hour period. Monday, July the 18th, beginning at 12 a.m. or midnight. Yes. And lasting? 24 hours. 24 hours. That's to right. 12, to 12 p.m. And guess what the sale is? 50% off on all Faith Library products. Books, CDs, yes. MP3s, and DVDs. That's right. Now, that's on Monday, July the 18th, okay? Only one day. One day. 24 hours. 24 hours. So make sure you write that down and, and start figuring out what you want to do, and then you can get online. It's online only, not that's call in. Not write in, That's just right. get, you got to get on a computer online, okay? That's right. Well, where are we going to be in Living Faith Crusades? I don't know. Y'all <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I know I'm going somewhere. <laughs> well, August 21st through the 23rd, we're going to be in Albuquerque, hey, New Mexico. Hey, I just work here. They tell me what to do. We and tell I do you it. what to do, don't yeah, we? That's right. We're going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with Pastors Mike and Sherry Schaefer. Uh, that is at Church Alive. Hey, I'm excited about this. You can are? I tell about it? You why? can tell about it. What was it in 1972? 1972. Mm -hmm. I preached at a church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mike and Sherry were in the hippie movement at that time. Yes. And they were in that service and they came forward and got saved. And That's then right. eventually came to Rhema uh -huh. and have been pastoring church 
uh, for years, and I'm so excited about getting to go there and getting to go to their church. That's and, right. And it's it's going to be a great time. That's, that's it. That's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yes. Uh, 21st of August. Through the 23rd. 22nd of August, 23rd of August. Church Alive. That's right. Service and time and locations you can find on uh, Raymond.org. Well, that's right. And then we're going to go over to Chandler, Arizona, August the 24th through the 26th. We're going to be at Faith Family Church, Pastors Andy and Deborah. White. And that's an exciting one too because that's Andy right. was, on, was our on our staff, staff here for a while. That's right. And we're so excited to get to go to these places. And then in September, we're going to go out, out uh, in North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes. To Victory Church. Pastors Mitch and Susan Horton. That's September and, the 11th through the yeah. 14th. So, hey, I know it's a little ways off, but hey, the way <laughs> the way the time is flying, half of the year is already gone. I and know. I, Don't even remind I, me. I was thinking about that today, and I thought, my goodness. I know. It <laughs> is half the time. Now, guess what starts in September? Rama Bible Training College. College yes. And you can still register there. If you're interested in being a student, you can find out more about Rama Bible Training College. Enrollment is on now for the fall and the spring semester. Yes. You can just go to rbtc.org trash slash slash yes. slash. Come on. What you talking about? Trendsetters. And you can learn all about Rama. Oh, yeah. You never know what's going to happen here. I you? know. You know what? People miss it when we don't talk, I know. Right? In fact, I got one guy. He told he was I, was, I was sitting somewhere in a mall somewhere waiting on you, and he uh -huh. came up and he said, I watch you on television, and he said, my best part is when y'all just talk together. <laughs> and she, he said, I like that better than anything. And then he went on to say, now, the message is okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, in fact, in May, you know, we did a little bit more uh, different format. Yes. And I was glad to get letters that they missed us. Thank you for missing us. We're back here in rare form today. In rare form. <laughs> but hey, thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. How to Train the Human Spirit, a new product by Kenneth E. Hagan that teaches scriptural principles we can practice to train our human spirits. In the book, It's Your Move by Kenneth W. Hagan, learn how to move out of the arena of discouragement into the arena of blessings. Both the book and the CD can be yours for only $10 right now. To order, just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night. Do it now. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.